innovate, accelerate, move technology forward. The startup revolution is now. Yeah. Seven. So slide eight and nine. Seven. Slide. Okay. Nine. Do you want me to? Yeah. 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 Use your phone. Uh, no. How about no? That's not the data saying on slide anyway. Yeah, okay. 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 Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for the patience. I know we're a little bit delayed. Um, so welcome to Accenture's um, Accelerating Technology Innovation in the Philippines, What's Next uh, talk. So my name is Gio Martin. I am a technology uh, research and development principal here in Accenture's uh, Advanced Technology Center in the Philippines, part of the Philippine Hub for Innovation. Later on in the talk, you'll be seeing our other two speakers, uh, Kyle Go and Gian Lau, who are also a part of our technology research and development team as well. And today during our talk, we'd like to share with you about how Accenture, Philippine universities, TDIs across the country, and startups are all starting, are starting to come together to elevate technology awareness and innovation to create a uniquely Filipino uh, impact on the global stage. So first and foremost, let me quickly demystify Accenture's role within all of this and then share with you our innovation architecture. So Accenture in the Philippines, we are one of the largest, if not the largest technology com uh, company in the country. And typically you might be more familiar with us on this slide closer to the far right with our Accenture delivery centers and our Accenture innovation uh, centers and our innovation hubs. So typically, this is where you would find our software developers and then our teams that are hard at work developing the latest um, uh, technology solutions for our clients across the globe. So at, uh, so at the APCP, we're very much about uh, software development, innovation, and then taking a look at how we can apply this and create value for our clients. Within the context of this talk this afternoon, we're going to be exploring a little bit further to the left in the section that we call Accenture Ventures and Open Innovation. And we're going to be sharing with you how over the past year, uh, we have been working very closely with our friends across the country to work together to, about, uh, to increase uh, awareness and exposure of innovation and about technology. So let me do a quick double click on Open Innovation and what we call our Project Spotlight. So what is Open Innovation? Open innovation, in a nutshell, is about Accenture coming to terms and being humble enough to say that we may not always have the best solution and we may not always have the best answers. Hence, we're willing to cooperate and collaborate with the academe, with startups, and, you know, uh, and research institutions, not only across the Philippines, but across the globe so that we can truly deliver what is uh, truly deliver on um, our mission of utilizing technology to deliver on human ingenuity. And within open innovation, we have this program called Project Spotlight. And Project Spotlight is wherein we take the best of the best startups that we work with from across the globe 
and then we really partner with them and go to market for them such that we are really able to deliver value to our global 2,000 clients. So we're effectively taking our startup par partners, our uh, research that we're doing with our partners in the universities and research institutions, we're de-risking that, deploying that at scale across our advanced technology centers, and then delivering value for our clients. So let's do a, another double click into Project Spotlight's Spotlight portfolio. So again, Project Spotlight represents Accenture's portfolio, which addresses our global enterprise clients' largest strategic innovation gaps. And this is not an exhaustive list, but this is a list which I felt might be interesting um, to us locally here in the Philippines, or even more so, relevant. So let's take a look at some of our partners that, I'm, that I've got here on this slide. So, Servest, Kitos, and ESG Book. These are all players within in, in the burgeoning sustainability space. Servest is all about understanding climate risk and climate risk at an asset level. So, so if I am an enterprise client or even let's say a city, I would be able to understand how certain core assets or certain core facilities of mine might be uniquely impacted by the changing global climate. And this is, is becoming a key focus area for our clients at Accenture. Kitos is all about understanding water quality, another uh, emerging problem across the globe. And then ESG book, probably the most relevant um, of the, within these three in sustainability, because it's about understanding um, economic and uh, social and governance practices, and then how those are being applied in, um, uh, in an enterprise context. ESG book is something that we've also been seeing parallels in with our work uh, with our partners in, um, in Animal Labs at La Salle, who have, who have begun putting up a similar offering. Next, we take a look at Planet Labs and we take a look at Pixel. This is within our newest dimension of space innovation. Planet Labs and Pixel are simply about utilizing space-based images to understand what, it, what environments are like on Earth and using artificial intelligence to um, intelligently label classify and predict certain situations. So, um, next, um, Tailspin and Striver. Tailspin and Striver are all about immersive learning platforms and then how to make the adoption of immersive learning via augmented and virtual reality easier and more accessible, especially to enterprise uh, clients which may have very special nuances or very specific use cases. Tailspin, Tailspin in particular, being a low-code, no-code platform, makes adoption very easy. But uh, Accenture in the Philippines has been doing a lot of work and investment, especially into the metaverse space. And Tailspin and Striver may sound very familiar to a couple of homegrown solutions which you might have seen at various um, startup um, community events, or even just recently um, at Accenture's metaverse mixer event. Because what I want the, the point I want to make here is our project spotlight portfolio. These are the great, these are the creme de la creme, the startups that Accenture has selected from across the globe to really be um, to, to, to be deliberately partnered with. And we've selected them from across all of our startup partners, across all of our university and research um, institution partnerships. But the point I wanted to make is these are not so far removed from solutions that we are seeing in the Philippines. These are not so much far removed from the courses that you are undertaking in classes for the students out there. Understanding ESG, understanding the impact of sustainability, understanding how artificial intelligence can be used to intelligently label things. Not necessarily just from space, but even as simple as understanding whether or not your ESA was cooked properly or not. Right? So, why have these been selected, and where is the Philippine presence into this? Because the, the founders behind these, while they are great, there's nothing particularly groundbreaking or special that we are seeing within this space. These are scaled, interesting solutions with a very deliberate problem statement and segment within which they operate. And these segments, again, are not far from the key focus areas that the Philippines has begun working itself into. So for those of you that were able to catch a couple of the talks earlier this week, you might have heard that some of the Philippines' key focus areas 
our supply chain, talent, open finance, for example. And you can see here the way that we have classified these partners by segment, they're all there. So why are these Philippine so so why are these segment areas uh, not having do not yet have a Filipino representation on it? That's probably the question that we're going to be asking as we move throughout our talk today. And again, double clicking back going back to Accenture's involvement within the Philippine ecosystem. In 2021, Accenture gave out a two a 1.8 million um, US dollar grant. Back then, that was approximately 18 million pesos. And we want to take this talk, this uh, remaining 35, 40 or so minutes that we have with you, to share with you the outcomes of that grant, and then talk about what's next? How better can we collaborate? Where can we take our relationships forward from here? And then how you, as students, startups, research, or academic personnel, how can you cook up, uh, involve yourselves within this ecosystem that we're hopefully looking to support in the Philippines. So I'll quickly hand you over to Kyla Go, we'll be talking about the innovation grant. All right, okay, so hi everyone, I'm Kayla Go, and as Gia mentioned, he's already mentioned a bit of the grant that was given last fiscal year. Um, and you might have seen this news article about Accenture giving an 80 million peso grant to 10 local universities. Um, but if you haven't yet, let me share a bit more about what the intention of the grant is and what the focus areas were of the innovation grant. So in here in the slide, you can see um, a quote said by Ambetiero in that GMA article. No. So, but to sum it up, the focus of the grant was to accelerate the use of new technologies, um, develop more sustainable business practices, and foster a more inclusive culture in the technology field. So, um, the goal of all this, through this, we are helping to nurture the next generation of Filipina technologists that will solve complex business and social challenges in the future. And we are more than happy to say that through the outcomes of the grant, we are one step closer to achieving this. So the accomplishments of the grant can be summed up through these seven Ps. So we do have that 28 publications. Um, so these are the published research and recognized journals or um, conferences. 27 patents, actions on propriety, um, inventions, or processes. 89 products, so these are our startups and our spin-offs from the local university TBS that we have partnered with. Um, we have garnered 173 partnerships, um, which are the linkages formed to accomplish project objectives. Um, and more than these products, no, because I think a lot of people would have thought that the outcome of the grant is just mostly startups or spin-offs, but we actually um, helped develop curriculums also with these universities. So that goes into our policy, as you can see there. And more than that, we have also six innovation centers established or enhanced, and 107 people serving. So these are all the trainings, the hackathons that the university EBIs have done with our students now. So yeah, um, but then more than these numbers, uh, what we want to highlight are some of the stories um, that we have across all the themes that I have mentioned, which are technology, um, inclusivity, sustainability, right? So let's go first with technology. So these are some of the technologies that came out of the grant. Um, while we can't mention all the specifics yet, um, we do want to highlight some accomplishments in the area of technology now. So for data and analytics, um, we have been working with AIM, so that's Esquilabs, um, basically what Esquilabs does is to inject data science and analytics um, courses for startups. No. And aside from these, um, we do have that IoT, as you can see, um, like I said earlier, we do have that ECCE IoT lab and curriculum development. And we also have IoT labs in Atenea and GST. And uh, for Metaverse, um, we do have those labs in CSD and Ateneo. 
blockchain, again, curriculum development. No? So for the students out there, if you're not yet aware, there are curriculum developments in these types of technologies. Um, and aside from these, UST has some startups in robotics, smart materials, and even life sciences. Um, I want to mention UP2, which has a few in agri-IoT, healthcare monitoring, and voice AI. And Amazon actually has developed a wearable COPD device. Um, so that's more of the healthcare tech already that we're seeing. Um, and FEU um, has been working closely on a virtual reality asset. So all these universities that we have partnered with have been exploring these emerging technologies that we wanted to accomplish in the grant, through the grant. Okay, so um, here are some numbers on inclusivity and sustainability. So while these numbers are nice, like that 120 plus female innovators empowered, um, those numbers are 21 founders below 18 years old. So those numbers are all nice, but again, we're here for the stories, some of our favorite grant stories. So um, for starters, for, in, for inclusivity, CSB has actually formally established an IEBPO curriculum for the deaf and developed an application called the FSL Buddy. So the FSL Buddy actually teaches the Filipino sign language to the deaf. And um, a fun fact about this is that FSL Buddy has actually collaborated with one of our Accenture innovation winners called Helga, which is a sign language translation and notification app that signals to the deaf to look around if there are any emergencies or dangers around them. Um, MC actually also shared an example. So this is for the 21 founders, um, youth founders that we have also empowered. You know. um, MC actually shared an example of a high school student's passion who worked on a smart home system device for his grandmother that lives at home. So he wanted to monitor signs of life within his grandmother's house to make sure that she's okay. You know. So um, aside from this in inclusivity for sustainability, um, DLSU developed a curriculum in sustainability reporting and have even introduced ESG reporting to the members of MAP, which is the Management Association of the Philippines, and PCCI, which is the Philippine Chamber and Commerce Industry in the Philippines. Now, um, and I know that a lot of our attendees here today uh, may be into that farm-to-table agri-tech stuff, and we wanted to give a nod also to TIP, who has developed the cacao pod maturity tester, um, which addresses wastage of cacao pod due to harvesting cacao before it has even matured. So again, just to reiterate, um, the ones that I have shared are just some of the highlights, but if you want to learn more and potentially collaborate on us with these, you can feel free to reach out to us and we'd be more than glad to discuss with you. So um, I, we also want to take this time um, to acknowledge the 10 local university, university TBIs that we have partnered with and Kubo because none of these um, accomplishments would have been possible without the hard work of everyone on this slide. No. So um, now that we've gotten the grant report out of the way, you might be wondering what's next. So, so thank you, Kyla and Gio, for uh, viewing me. And the question, what's next? That's an important question this year, as the Philippines is in a very unique position. In the last two years, we have proved that we can adopt technology at an incredible pace. In the first place, we were already producing a unique value to the world as Filipinos. With our nation being service-oriented, community-driven, English-speaking, 
and of course, naturally creative. And to further that point on creativity, our unique creativity you know, in the Philippines, Accenture has been operational the last 35 years here. Yet, it is only this year that we are seeing Accenture giving a grant, no strings attached, to the Philippine innovation ecosystem. Moreover, just this year, Accenture also set up a core group of their Metaverse hub, or what they call the Metaverse Continuum Business Group, here in the Philippines to lead the way in handling the science, the 3D modeling, and the storytelling of our Metaverse developments and assets. So this bullishness in the Philippines is a common theme mentioned throughout the week. As the VC panel last Monday said, the Philippines is red hot, right? <laughs> and also, um, Pumu said last Monday that we should continue investing in the trinity of payments, logistics, and internet connectivity here in the Philippines. So we agree that it is still a foundational bust to do that. To do that, but to truly capitalize on the unique creativity found in the Philippines, we must not constrain our support to the, to just those areas, as this constrains that creativity within that space. So we can see from the grant and from the last two years that there are Filipinos who can create deep tech startups. We must leverage that position. Is right now and make a conscious effort to expose our startups and the youth to emerging emerging technologies to make it easier for Filipinos to create that global impact. We need to work together as an ecosystem to expand boundaries for Filipino creativity and talent. So for the last portion, and because we need to work together, I will share a few lessons learned from interacting with three key stakeholders. Uh, here in, when we were managing the innovation grant. Okay, so for the first lesson targeted to the private sector, one thing we learned after the grant is that universities and PBIs, even Kubo, are constantly searching for real industry problem statements to develop innovations on. So Doc Louie from UP Upscale yesterday told us that he had a specific example where uh, one of his students uh, on his own, had to go on his own to reach out to a company, go through the hassle of setting the interview up. But that one interview allowed him to create an AI for retail, uh, something that Accenture might actually be interested in in the near future, right? Um, and it really just shows that we need to push collaboration of the private sector with universities. TBI and startups. The second point for the private sector, all aspects of our business, even the supporting of its functions like procurement and legal, should be aligned to an innovation agenda to make it easier for collaboration to occur with startups. So we need to be more comfortable moving away from the nine month procurement or vendor onboarding cycle and consider how to work with an academe and smaller vendors like startups on a faster paced ecosystem. And Gio just mentioned some value earlier on now on how working with startups is bringing value to Accenture. So I'm sure in other industries, it would be the same. Okay, and for next one, for the PBIs and startup enablers out there, Accenture works with a lot of campus placement offices. <laughs> so if you see right there, that's our managing director on the bike. <laughs> that is how it usually is. <laughs> so we work with a lot of campus placement offices and students. And what we learned from talking to them is that students and even faculty are not aware of these tech resources that are in their own campuses. Uh, we are seeing many departments and labs acting very independently and siloed. And we need these groups to work together, not just for students to hear about what's there in their campus, what resources are there, but we need this, this interdepartment collaboration to create uh, more holistic innovations. Like in Accenture, to make when we make one virtual reality asset, we are collaborating with technologists, 
of, and designers of different specialties. Uh, alongside the engineers, we have three designers. We have concept artists and, of course, the business folks. So look to bring your universities, tech groups, business groups, and even fine arts groups together to get exposed to emerging technologies and work on these emerging technologies, hopefully also on real problem statements with the industry. And an extra challenge is to actually expose students in the Philippines as early as junior high school. Usually, colleges tend to expose their students to um, these innovations for thesis statements, right? Which are when given third year, fourth year college. And that might be a little too late to pursue a career, a career in tech or to become passionate about technology for most at least, right? So challenge your universities, challenge students, create CBI cohorts for high school students. And lastly, for the enablers of startups, if you have any developments in space, metaverse, AI, life science, any emerging technology, please be actively reaching out to Accenture and other technology corporations in the Philippines as we are ready to have those discussions and figure out ways to collaborate and mentor and just discuss about it. Now, for the startups, which make up majority of the audience here, I bet, my, our ask for you is to use the resources around you. Access to the Metaverse Labs, IoT labs, data science labs, technology business incubators to get to get knowledge on industry problem statements and even possibly have access to some Accenture subject matter experts could probably just be an email to it. And oftentimes, you know, these resources are right under your nose. I myself did not know we had a blockchain lab in Ateneo, or in fact, anything to do with technology, uh, my whole 16 years in the university. Uh, so imagine now uh, what is actually going on there. You just have to go out there, ask about it. Don't be intimidated by emerging technology, as there are people willing to help regarding them and ready to talk about these. And as mentioned and proven this year, we can 100% compete globally. Sometimes just getting exposed to these technologies and realizing how simple things are done globally may just be all you need to break through. And lastly, for everyone in this talk and in Philippine Startup Week, we look forward to continued pitches, not just for grants, but other things. With the pandemic relaxing, we're happy to host your teams, startups, universities to have dialogues with us. So tell us about things you need beyond funding, workshops, technology tours, industry problem statements, mentors. We believe that leaving this ecosystem in a better place will benefit everyone and all stakeholders involved. So to end, we appreciate the effort of startups and startup enablers here in the Philippines. And we are in a very, very exciting position right now. The world sees it, so let's keep the momentum going. And here is uh, one of our members <laughs> just casually walking around like how many of Center person would here in the Innovation Lab. So we're ready to meet you guys here, think around, play with some toys. <laughs> See you. See you soon, everyone. And we're open to questions. Thank you.
time. Okay, so um, that's generally all of the, the keynote level talks that we wanted to give for today. Though. And thank you very much for those of you that have also begun submitting questions on the chat. So while we move and go through our Q&A segment, uh, please feel free also to throw more questions up into the Axel events chat um, so that we'll be able to try our best to respond to them as we go through our uh, little segment just now. So maybe just getting started on a couple of the questions. So maybe I'll send the first one over to Gaia. So our first question is, you kind of talked about startup stories. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite one? I guess my favorite one would be the SSL buddy app. Um, because, like I mentioned earlier, they even collaborated with Alga. And I, I think that was one of the inspiring stories that actually made me believe in adventure more. Mm -hmm. um, not, <laughs> I'm not um, telling everyone to join the man, but you know, I'm not a career or anything. <laughs> but I guess it showed me that. A company so big, like a center, um, can actually also take into account like inclusivity, diversity. You know, it's not just about revenue, revenue, revenue. And um, through partnering up with startups like these, it actually shows that we are not just limiting opportunities um, to uh, you know to us. Mm -hmm. We're opening this and we're actually becoming more of an inclusive society more and more each day through partnering up with initiatives like this. So I guess that would be my favorite side. And just to add to that, Chiaco, I think that's one of the good stories also because it opens doors off to this other startups here who have similar ideas. Uh, where you can collaborate with us, it shows that we can collaborate on things. Uh, and just for the sake of innovation and making an impact here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Can I jump on the bandwagon? <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, so I'll just share my one as well. So um, I, I kind of already sort of like shared it. Um, and this was about the, that student from Miriam mm -hmm. that kind of, he, he developed this IoT solution, this smart home solution for his grandma because he simply started off with the problem statement of, I just want to make sure grandma's okay. And um, we might have missed, we might have glossed over it very briefly, but but this individual was at this problem for four or five ish iterations. So not being able to put together a team, having to juggle work, having to juggle exams, and all those other things that all of the students on this call that I'm sure can relate to, right? But I also just want to draw an analogy to something that that really struck me from. Um, Prim from AIMD uh, Data Banato Incubators uh, talk yesterday. And it's about perseverance and understanding why it is you're embarking on this journey in the first place. And I think this particular student's story really speaks to that. It, it, he, was, he was not able to get a lot of support. He had to juggle a lot of things, but he really stuck at it because he believed genuinely in the problem that he was trying to solve. And he had someone at the core that he could anchor himself around to. And as as someone that's always sort of approached things from very much a um, almost cynically business perspective. Um, and Jane and Kyla just giggle right there. I, I think this, this, this one really struck a chord with me. And, and I think that's a very powerful thing that I hope that the students, the startups, and the TBIs on the call today would, will sort of take away. All right, let's move on to the second. So second question is, Okay, how does Accenture work with partner startups and research institutions like universities? Um, maybe I'll take this one first. So, um, Accenture partners with startups, research groups, and universities, etc. And we don't really have a set playbook. I'm going to be very honest and transparent with you there, because every single relationship is in and of itself unique. We, we may have some maybe go-to default ideas as to how we might best work together. But at the end of the day, it depends on why are we engaging in this relationship in the first place? And then how do we as two, three mutual organizations gain benefit from this? And then at the end of the day, what's the mission that we're setting out to do? If we go back to our spotlight partners, we have 30 different spotlight partners in our portfolio. And we have 30 different unique engagement mechanisms with each one of them. We had 10 university partners over the course of our grant. 
we had 10 unique different programs that we were running around like Headless Chickens trying to manage for the last year. Thank you, Kubo, <laughs> for, for helping us with all of that. And, and, and I think that speaks volumes, right? There's, there's no single thing. It's really about let's sit down, let's figure out what we want to do, and let's figure out how our two organizations can gain some form of mutual benefit from it. And that's sort of how we approach things. That's good. Okay. Um, maybe let's move. Okay. Let's, let's take one that popped up recently from the chat. It's how can TDIs from outside Metro Manila work with Accenture? Okay. So I think that's a fairly good question. Let me take a stab at it first. So TDIs outside Metro Manila, um, in terms of working with Accenture, drop us an email. So I believe you have our Axel event contacts. We're very searchable on LinkedIn, or at least we try to be. Drop us a connect, drop us a message, and let's have a conversation that I just mentioned, and then we can figure things out from there. And a lot of the starting points, I'm going to be uh, straight up. We're going to talk about how do we work together to enhance your curriculum? What is your agenda? How do you sort of see what's your vision towards shepherding, shepherding your students into that into um, a post-graduation world, mm -hmm. right? And that's how things are going to start. And then that's how our relationship is sort of going to evolve. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say that um, I was listening to Arvin's talk yesterday, yeah. um, and he did say that this grant is just like a big, the beginning. It's just more of like the best out what's out there um, to see um, what good ideas can come out of these universities. And like we said earlier, the outcome of the grant is really good, you know? So we're yeah. really um, looking forward to hearing more of those um, ideas from different schools. And like what Gia said, you can just quickly send us an email or connect with us. Um, we'd really love to discuss these things with you. Right. And I think concrete ways now that we can we can collaborate together we're probably got to But one to have that discussion to figure out what we want to do. Yeah. But two, if you have if your university already has some progress in what you would think is an innovation. Pitch, pitch that to us. We'd love to hear that out. See what what's going on in the hood of that innovation. Uh, play with it, like, dissect it a bit, and I think from there, much more opportunities for the collaboration will pop up. Mm -hmm. So I think those two ways. Now. Okay. So I, I really like the question, but let me remove Accenture from the mix for a little bit, right? Because a lot of our answers, I feel, have been a little bit too focused on us as an organization, and. The grant was really about how do we uplift and elevate the Philippine ecosystem, right? So let me rephrase that. How can TDI from Metro Manila work with other TDIs, right? So let, let's take a look at that. How can TDIs, startups, and universities work with each other independent of having someone like Accenture in the mix? Mm -hmm. Going back to Kyla's slide, we built six innovation centers. We've begun building curriculums. And and as, as, as a result of the grant, you know what? Please use these facilities. These facilities have been established, have been fitted out with the intent of being able to allow and foster a more collaborative and elevated technology ecosystem in the country, right? So sure, a lot of them are a little bit concentrated within Metro Manila, but talk and if it's curriculum, that's fairly easy to, to begin having conversations about. If it's about innovation centers, go approach your, your sister schools, go approach your colleagues um, in the academe. And then how can you work together to leverage your existing innovation infrastructure and centers to really bring about and elevate that collaboration model, right? I just wanted to quickly add, um, right. there are a lot of different university PPIs, like, the banner, just some of the few. Yeah, right? Did you have their MOA sign yesterday? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So, um, I guess more than just as organizations, we really have to um, want to do our part in lifting this ecosystem up. And it's not just centered on our organization, but to really collaborate with each other. 
um, it's not just with the private sector, but again, like what Gia said, you can, I think like what Gia said actually in his talk earlier, um, a lot of TBIs are interested in collaborating, not just with them, from their students, but from other students as well, right? Yeah. And outside. And then outside of their school. Yeah. They're accepting, some of the students, the TBIs are very good, are accepting uh, other students from other schools into their cohorts. So as long as you have a specific kind of technology or you're addressing a certain industry statement. Okay, so good question, clearly. <laughs> so let's move on to the next one. So from your experience working with local incubators, maybe this one is a little bit more for you, Jian. What do you think universities should improve on to have more students involved in technology and startups? Right, well, I touched a bit on it earlier, but uh, it's that universities have to make an effort to avoid acting in silos within the university and your departments. Mm -hmm. Usually the technology business incubator is a separate group from those uh, involved with the curriculum developments. Uh, so it's another layer before it reaches the students. So there has to be a system created such that uh, the innovation hub works with can talk to in, in, within the university can talk to the engineering courses and their students can talk to their fine arts courses and their students and can talk to the business students as well and create one place where they could distribute information about resources can send the latest uh, emerging technology updates and can pull groups together so that they can collaborate with people of different specialties uh, we were just talking with Ateneo yesterday and they were they saw the value of creating a when you make these competitions don't just target it at the engineering team uh, the engineering course or the programming courses find a way to have a competition that brings together like strangers from these different courses put them in one team and you don't know how much innovation is really going to come from that. And that's kind of what we try to do here in the Innovation Hub. Uh, when we build our assets, we bring together concept artists, designers, design thinkers, uh, engineers, 3D modelers, we put them in one team, and th that's where our, uh, our innovations come from. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe I want to take a stab for that, that one as well. So again, so that's how do we, how do we think universities might improve on getting more students involved in technology and startups, right? And I sort of maybe want to distill it into a couple of points. The first one is awareness. And I very briefly mentioned this right at the start, is simply put, make your, allow your students to become more aware of what is out there and what is the promise that technology can bring to them. I, I'm going to be very frank, right? Tech, there, there is much more to technology than blockchain, than artificial intelligence, than video games, right? There, technology is fundamentally that enabler that allows you to solve your problems. And when you're able to begin, sorry, sorry, let me finish. When you're able to begin understanding that, and the students are, are able to begin understanding, how do I potentially use this piece of technology to solve a local problem at home? I go back to that use case of the, 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 the person at Miriam. And, you're going to, and then you're going to start seeing more stories like that, very deeply personal problems, very deeply personal values coming out. And then people are incentivized and encouraged to utilize more interesting pieces of technology to address problems like that. And that's how you get the snowball rolling. It's as simple as awareness and exposure. And building on that, if you can take the next step and spread that awareness to people in junior high school. Uh, Miriam started doing that, and we were very surprised with the outputs. Yeah. Uh, there's this one group who were, they, they were at uh, grade nine, and they were creating virtual reality assets uh, that even shocked our boss on it. <laughs> we were very impressed. So if, they, if Philippines can do it, if the youth can do it, why aren't we sharing the knowledge as much with them? 
And yes, I also want to say, just a quick nod to all our students out there watching. You know, um, thank you for exposing yourself to these talks during the Philippine Startup Week. And I hope that you can also spread the news to your friends, um, to people who are also interested but not yet aware that, um, you know, this is what's happening with our ecosystem. So really, just those little discussions go a long way as well, you know, so I just wanted to Say hi, there's students. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go on to the next one. So, um, the next question is: So, what's what skills? Or get this all. What skills should students learn while at university to future proof themselves? So, some more recent students, <laughs> guys. What, what what skills do you feel students should pick up at university to future proof themselves? Well, I think. The question is more asking the students what they're passionate about in what provinces of their profession about following. Mm -hmm. yep. And then from there, it's linking the skills to them based on what is needed to solve that problem. So, um, so, yeah, but it's figuring out what the students are passionate about first, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And then since the emerging tech, it's always changing, right? Uh, I think it's finding that one passion project first. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think it's like one specific yeah, skill. It's, it's a bit of a hard question. I, I think if there's any skill that I want students to have, it's to, be, to just be open to learning every day, like be a lifelong learner. I think that's a skill that you can take with you even once you graduate. You know, a lot of the skills that we've learned um, actually were outside the classroom, the bus. So I am, um, I mean, just being passionate, like what Gian said, um, opens doors as well to, you know, listening to talks like these and such. So I think just really being curious a lot and just being a lifelong learner, especially if you want to be in the tech industry, mm -hmm. um, I think that goes a long way because there is a lot of things to learn to look at. So yeah. Let me slightly off, let me offer a slight rephrase to that and to make it significantly shorter. <laughs> it's don't be scared. This is a very simple uh, soft skill. Be learn to become comfortable with the idea of it's not it may not work out on the first time. Be, be comfortable with failure and then do not be scared to try out new things. Mm -hmm. And I see, at least from the folks that I have worked with, that oftentimes is what is keeping them from adopting the more niche, edge case, bleeding edge sort of technologies and methodologies, right? And I guess I, I, I haven't been a student for very long and lifelong learning is sort of all. Like a I'm not <laughs> But it's don't be scared of technology. I guess don't or rather not, not don't be scared of technology. Don't be scared of trying out new things and don't be scared of failure. Because at the end of the day, a lot of the things that you're going to pick up in the workforce are going to be like that. And it's not just about technology at this point. And let me flip that also to the startups again. While we while this question was targeted primarily at university students, how to harden themselves. For startups, it's that same message. It's be comfortable with the idea of rapid iteration. Be comfortable with the idea of rapid failure. You guys hear this all of that all the time. And startups live in espouses on a daily basis. But where are the truly deep tech, ble bleeding edge technologies in the Philippines? I, I, want, I want to post a challenge statement to the various startups and to the various um, uh, TBI um, faculty at uh, this juncture of where, where, where are our project spotlights? Because we can do these. We've drawn parallels and these are very relevant segments um, within sustainability, within supply chain, within uh, open finance. And it's really just about let's move, let's try to elevate in terms of the solutions that we're creating and try not to be so intimidated by the prospect of deep tech. So maybe that's how I sort of want to end off on that specific question. Okay. I think um, that's more or less all of the questions that we have from the crowd at this juncture. So maybe uh, just on, a, on an ending note, right? 
um, me, Jay, and Kyla, and the rest of my team been sort of sitting in these Philippine Startup Week conferences and sitting through the talks and hearing from the, the, um, the best of the TBIs. We've been hearing from um, industry experts, venture capital experts. And to the rest, of, to, to those of you watching this talk today, firstly, thank you for your time. Secondly, please take more of your time and watch the rest of the talks. A lot of these talks truly are incredibly um, insightful and really will be able to give to, to spark that sort of thought in your mind about how do you per perhaps elevate your awareness of technology and new methodologies all at once. Philippine Startup Week is a fantastic resource. And we at, we at Accenture are very much happy to be um, part of this uh, week-long celebration. And we look forward to be, work to, to be talking with and collaborating with all of you in the future. So I think that's it. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.